Welcome to Frequency Matters, the RF Microwave Update Series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my co-host, Eric Heim. So in this episode, we're going to take a look at our August European Microwave Week issue. The cover feature is written by Helen Duncan, and she covers all the microwave companies in Germany as the event is taking place in Berlin, which hasn't been to in a while. She does a great job for us every year on this article. Eric, what did you have for technical articles? Thanks, Pat. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty healthy and dynamic ecosystem in Germany. In addition to Helen's article, we had a nice feature from IMST in Germany, uh, where they describe a scalable, dual-polarized, omnidirectional TXRX front-end module that's intended to be used as an evaluation kit to support the development of 5G and 6G communications. Uh, the initial product operates from 24.25 to 29.5 gigahertz, and it can be upscaled to 39 gigahertz. Uh, so they've got lots of pictures and diagrams describing the design, performance, and layout of that device. Uh, they call it the 5G CAN, and it's cylindrical, so it actually looks like a CAN. Uh, we also had Yoel share their latest forecast on the RF GAN marketplace. They anticipate the market reaching $2.7 billion in 2028, and their article does a good job of forecasting uh, the revenue for the various market segments with a deeper dive into the wireless infrastructure market. They've got some thoughts on the relative market shares and evolutionary paths for all the PA technologies and base stations, and the discussion of GAN on silicon's trajectory in that and other RF segments. Uh, but no one likes the person that spoils the ending, so I won't do that. Uh, I'll just say, take a look at that article. And so uh, turning to the news, there were some acquisitions that took place. Marky Microwave announced that they've acquired the Waveguide business of Precision Millimeter Wave. And this acquisition expands Marky's uh, reach into the evolving millimeter wave and sub-terahertz markets and enables the company to create differentiated products to combine both Waveguide and traditional board-level connection methods. Marky Microwave will now be offering over 100 standard commercial waveguide products and their multiple custom waveguide products spanning millimeter wave to sub terahertz. And this includes antennas, connectors, switches, and isolators. And I just had an interview with Marky, so we'll be posting that right after this. And Mari Microwave, backed by Artemis Capital Partners, announced that they've completed their previously announced acquisition of Wireless Telecom Group. And this includes Boyton. Halsworth Noisecom brands, and so that really strengthens Mari's test and measurement technology portfolio in the high performance phase noise analysis, RF synthesis, and signal generation and noise generation, plus RF power measurement areas. So they're really looking good in that area. Eric, what did you see in the news? Well, we captured a fascinating release from ID TechX on the outlook for desktop quantum computers. Uh, it's a fairly long press release. And it does a good job of identifying some of the challenges of quantum computing and what's being done to address those challenges. Uh, they're forecasting deployments in the thousands, so not huge quantities, but still quantities uh, in 2043. So I wouldn't get in line just yet, but uh, something interesting to keep an eye on. And of more immediate interest, the latest GSA data claims that 115 operators in 52 countries and territories have invested in public 5G standalone networks. And the key word there is invested. Uh, they count at least 36 operators in 25 countries and territories that have launched or deployed public 5G standalone networks. Uh, so the numbers drop, and we can have a long discussion on 5G business models and operator profitability, uh, but there's no doubt that the 5G evolution is moving along. And so uh, turning to events, I just attended the IEEE EMC SIPI event in Grand Rapids. So I posted my videos, uh, some pictures, and a show summary on Signal Integrity Journal. So you can check those out if you'd like. And in our August issue, we have uh, in-depth coverage of the European Microwave Week event, which takes place September 11th through the 22nd in Berlin. And so this event is comprised of three conferences, the European Microwave Conference, European Microwave Integrated Circuits Conference, and the European Radar Conference. And then they also have three forms, the Defense Forum, and that includes security and space applications, the Automotive Forum, and the 5G to 6G Forum. So lots going on on the conference side. And also the exhibition will feature more than 300 companies this year, which is kind of a, one of the larger 
uh, exhibitions they've had. So it's going to be a great event. Registration is looking strong. And the theme this year is Waves Beyond Walls. And that's because they kind of envisioned science and tearing down walls, similar to how Germany was uh, reunited as one country. So we hope to see everybody in Berlin next month. Yeah, looking forward to that, Pat. Uh, and just a reminder, EDICon Online takes place every Wednesday in October, covering topics in RF, microwave, signal integrity, power integrity, and EMC, EMI. Uh, note that continuing education credits with the IEEE are available by watching our technical sessions live. Registration will be opening next week, so please go to edicononline.com to sign up. That wraps up this episode. Our sponsor for this episode is RFMW. RFMW is a technical distributor of RF and microwave products and now power management products. When you start your next design, consider their multiple product lines. And remember that as a member of the industry, a subscription to Microwave Journal is free, so please visit our site and subscribe today if you're not already a reader. Thanks for watching, and join us next time for another Frequency Matters.